Hello everyone, so I am doing this video for 40k theories to give him more content. I am back from England. You guys thought I was gone, didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Anyway. Uh, so here we have it. Um, we have Death Watch, the Tyranid Invasion. Now, one of the things about this game that I'm a little upset about personally, and that's that there's only Tyranids to fight. So, let's do what we always do. Let's go into settings. You pretty much just get a resolution window mode just turn on automatically. Uh, I recommend turning VSync off, particularly if you have an LED monitor because uh, it causes issues. Quality wise, uh, okay, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can you developers do me a favor? Stop adding this option that says epic. Okay, you are not. I, I don't mean to sound rude, but you are not drawing the Mona Lisa of video games here. The word ultra or, or, or maximum is much, much preferred, personally. Uh, but you don't have a lot of options or a lot of things you can actually change with the graphics. Then again, this is not exactly a graphics intensive game. The problem with the game is it's only in 32-bit. I have a 64-bit operating system, so I'm having to run this in compatibility mode, so no guarantee we don't crash and explode. Uh, you have these controls. Everything is done with the left mouse button, pretty much. Um, you, you don't, you just need the WAS and D keys to move the camera on the left mouse button, and that's about it. Languages comes in English, French, uh, Dutch, I think it's Dutch, no, Italian, German, Spanish, and Russian. Of course, I'm going to select English. You have intro and credits, that's your options menu. Nothing fantastic, there are a few options that are kind of missing I would like to have. Um, the display resolutions go all the way up to 1080, or all the way down to 480, depending upon what your monitor is capable of displaying. Now here, we are actually in the game. The only option I have is to do the actual campaign. I cannot go back and do previous missions or any of that until I've completed all of the game. Here we have my Space Marines. Now I'm saving up to start buying them special abilities, but you have uh, Devastator, Sack Marines, Assault Marines, Apothecaries are incredibly rare but available, and I haven't really run into anything else as of yet. You have a codex to find out everything you know so far as you can see there's also veteran and champion units these are kind of upgraded units now one of the problems I do have is that certain types of Marines only come from certain chapters so you'll notice that as I go through here stern guard there's no apothecaries from the blood angels from the Space Wolves. None there either. Ultramarines. Apothecary. There's only one rank, and so, and then you have Honor Guard, Master of Relics. Uh, ranks are one to four. Also have the enhanced edition, additional things. So you have a. Uh, Black Templars, a very small select amount, and Dark Angels, a very small select amount. Imperial Fists, very small select amount. Then you have, there's a lot of weapons in the game. A lot of weapons. Most of them are just upgrades of previous weapons. So we've gone over this. Now you have this other option called Open Packs. And to show you guys what this means, uh, I need to sell two pieces of war gear really quick in order to get access to it. So let's see here. Uh, somebody's using that. Somebody's using that. I think everything's in use, so I'll, I'll have to actually go play a campaign mission to show you guys the open packs at the end here. Now, I again, I, don't, I can't select these difficulties because I haven't beaten it yet, but once I beat it, I can't go back and replay it until I've beaten the whole game. 
Kill team aboard the hive ship are making their way to the biomass pools with experimental antrovising agent. If delivered correctly, the agent will eat the hive ship from the inside out. Here you decide on a kill team that you will use for your mission. As you unlock new space marines and war gear and gain XP, you will be able to swap out and upgrade space marines. So, you can rename the space marines, by the way. I, I've left them at default, but for, you know, me as a YouTuber, if I was going to, I only have five space marines anyway, so this is what I got. If I was going to, say, play this for a Let's Play, I would be renaming my Space Marines after my subscribers, or after my collaborators, however I wanted to do it, or both. Kill Team, the biomass pools in this chamber must be contaminated with the atrophying agent. Begin the process by pouring the flasks into the pools. Expect heavy resistance. As you can see, the voice acting, there's not a lot of it, but it's not bad. It's not the, you know, the best I've ever heard. For 40k but it's not bad um, but now one of the issues I do have here is my camera angle I really cannot change this direct overhead view so let's get started with a you now each marine has four action points there are ways to get more everything's done with the left mouse button oh look tyranny lay into him with the vengeance that I possibly can. And we walk up here. And we see more Tyranids. Each plasma. And it's just your strategic movements and then you roll to hit. I believe that this is a... Oh no, this is a Devastator. Should have done that. This is an assault marine. We move him up to the very front because if he gets melee attacked, he has a chance of attacking back. And this is our last tactical marine who, at present, I don't believe has line of sight to anything. Nope. So we're just going to move him up. Now we're probably about to take a beating on their turn. As you guys can uh, clearly attest. Oh, we he missed. How fortunate. Alright, let's show you how melee works. So, if I walk up and try to hit him, I hit him. Now, if I'd missed and he was and he would have got, he would have had a percent chance to attempt to melee me back. Go ahead and claim that point that we need to claim. Is it actually going to animate this? Huh. Cool. Devastator Marines are incredibly powerful. However, they can only they, it takes two action points for them to fire their heavy weapon. But uh, he only has to hit like once or twice, and it's uh, it's good and dead. Salt Marine moves over. Regal Regulus. Oh no, that's not our Salt Marine. Urken Fohammer of the Space Wolves moves over and drops it in. Now one thing to note here is uh more more Moriar, is that how I pronounce that? Correct me if I'm wrong, it's okay. Um he has more he has more base hit points, and if we actually were to look at his stats, he has more he has higher stats base because he's a veteran. Veteran and champion units have more capacity to expand themselves and also start with higher natural stats. Which is why eventually you would probably like to replace your, all of your space marines. When the Xenos are out of sight, another tactical insight from the ultramarines. If you will, brother. But my tactical advice has kept this squad functioning thus far. And they argue. This is, he's a Blood Angel veteran. And uh, Regalus, my original attack marine, is an ultramarine. Who needs to learn how to bloody well shoot. We 
We're going to go on overwatch here until in the face of this way. So anything that moves through these squares, he's going to shoot at. And he will continue to shoot until he's out of action points. So there's there's definitely a strategic element to not just, you know, willy-nilly running around and using all your action points. There we go. Though this is about to get very hairy very quickly. So he's going to run up and get gunned down by the overwatch shot. And these guys are going to move up and uh, our poor, poor assault marine gets attacked. Not quite sure what just happened there. And he counterattacks! And he can counterattack any number of times from any direction. So you kind of want him just to have a shitload of hit points and then to increase that chance to counterattack. And it adds an element of randomness to the game that, while it's not entirely random, it's random enough that it can change how the game works and how things play out. Of course, however, space marines do not only block line of sight for each other, but they which, to me, doesn't make any sense. They also block movement for each other. And when you're placed on Overwatch, you stop looking in all directions, and you only look in the direction you're facing. So, and if you're hit during Overwatch, it removes your Overwatch. Now I'm wondering why Plasma guy over there didn't just lay into him. But I guess Regalus can't wolf, see him. It is Sanguinius, of course. He was the most beloved by the people. Exile yourself to the eye for uttering such refuse. Without guidance, there will be no Adeptus Astartes. They fight to a lot. It is the old father who is and has ever been the greatest. His throne sacrifice, and our progenitors were but his sons. That is what the arch heretic Horus failed to understand. Wise words, brother. You have humbled us. Of course, in the fight, Ross would take the hides from any who faced him. They, uh, they really do have, you know, heated arguments. Oh, wow, that is like the worst Overwatch in the world, so screw it. We're not doing it. And Overwatch does take a movement point, so in that case, I can't actually um, have any real fun with it. And I'm trying to show you that I can't really use it because I need a movement point to activate Overwatch and then additional movement points per use of it. So you need at least minimum two to use Overwatch. I think their range, by the way, is ridiculous because they do outrange bolters. Now the biomass pool that we dumped the uh, agent in here, and so this is uh, this is kind of just you're, you're going to move in in games. You're going to move from objective point to objective point. You're also going to have times where you have to stay and defend certain areas. Lay you low. And in general, this is just how things are done. Okay, that might be one very dead marine. Problem solved. I find the Devastator, by the way, is a little OP when he actually gets to fire because basically, I've never had him not kill the target, even if it's a Tyranid Warrior. Um, he just kills it. Reach the chamber walls. Where the, oh, we gotta reach those. Well then. This is 
is about to get hairy unless he gets counterattacks. There we go. Alright, let's have our assault marine clean house. And everyone else can move in to get out of this house. You know what I mean? How did you miss at that range? Like, I get Tyranids are fast, but I didn't realize they were that fast. Now we're waiting on our other two battle brothers. See, you can't leave until all surviving Marines are out. And even then, you may want to stop and pick up their war gear should they have anything particularly valuable. And you do try, want to kind of try to eliminate every single enemy on the map. Because they're all worth experience points. And not just to the guy who kills it, but it splits it. It gives everyone else a little bit of taste of XP when something dies. But uh, I believe that is the end of this mission. Yep, that's the end of this mission. So that's the mission. Marines all pick up their XP. You then go upgrade them. And... You get a card. Master Crafted Bolter. That's not bad. I'll actually use that. And now, now that we have enough uh, Inquisition points, I'll go buy a card pack and open them. Uh, the Inquisition points, by the way, were originally... Because this was originally a free-to-play game, the Inquisition points were originally the way in which you bought the packs through buying it with real money. This was originally an Android free-to-play game. Now it's a game on Steam. They do deliver what is promised. The game... I haven't had any crashes once I started running it in compatibility mode. Um, it's not necessarily bad. Uh, and for $15 to get an XCOM-like experience... What the heck is Trip Helix Alpha? Good God. Got a regular Space Wolf Assault, Assault Marine. And I got a last cannon called God Hammer. Wow, that is... That is a bunch of ouch. So there. That is basically what you do in 40k Death Watch. I, I like the game. I honestly do. Um, I am considering fitting it into my Let's Play schedule just to see if people well receive it. But it delivers what it's promised. But let's go take a look while we're sitting here talking at the Steam store to see just what they did promise and what they've managed to give us. So, turn-based strategy game. Yep, very feels very, very much like XCOM. So on the edge of Imperial space where your space screens will take on Tyranids and a series of tactical engagements from war ray over cities to the inside of Tyranids' biosphere. the missions will see your kill team rise in shrinking skills and faces every great threats and peril. Absolutely. It's rendered with the Unreal 4 engine, which is oddly enough very reliable, even more reliable than the Unity stuff. All missions remastered with dynamic lighting and special effects. In comparison now, by the way, to the handheld version of this. Um, brand new Space Marines from Dark Angels, Imperial Fists, and Templar chapters. That's nice. I wish you would, you know, expand the chapters beyond these, these, these six, seriously. Uh, embark on a journey to save the sector from the alien threat, smash the alien threat, and a bespoke campaign against the Tyranids. Collect unique Death Watch Space Marines customized with a huge assortment of weapons and war gear. I also wish we would fight more than Tyranids, because Death Watch fights, you know, all Xenos, Orcs, Eldar, Dark Eldar, Tau. Give us some other threats to fight. I mean, there's... Plenty of room for this game to expand upon. It came out in October 2015. There's a lot they could do with it. I'm just 
kind of wishing they would. It would give me an excuse to uh, to play through it. But as you guys can see, that is the entirety of the gameplay. Uh, it's not exactly the most pretty thing in the world to look at. I wish we could change the camera angle, because I personally would like to put the camera angle down onto the battlefield and look directly behind my Space Marines, so I could basically see it as they see it over their shoulders, so to speak. Um, even though it's a turn-based tactical strategy game, I still would like to see the action much, much, much closer than I can right now. And... That's all I gotta say about it. I mean, you're gonna fight all all the Tyranid beasts, including a Hive Tyrant, eventually. It's decent. It's actually a fairly good experience. It's just not. It's not anything I personally would write home about. So there you go. Your review of Warhammer 40k Death Watch. Did you guys like it? Seriously. Uh, if you guys would like to see more stuff by me, Fiora, come over to my channel. We're covering Total War Warhammer, Armored Warfare, World of Tanks. Uh, Eisenhorn is coming up. I've already got my game key uh, as a press copy, and we'll be playing it next month as soon as the day it comes out. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, yeah, and I run a Dark Heresy RPG game on Fridays. Also with a bunch of live streams for you guys to enjoy and interact with me directly. If you'd like to support Remlays, which I do, um, I'm one of his patrons, so go to Patreon. Seriously, the guy is still looking for a full-time job. Why not help make this his full-time job? Kill me later for that, Remlays. Go ahead. Um, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you'd like to leave a comment, it's right there. Go for it. Uh, just don't be a dick. I mean, I, I personally have three rules for my channel, and I think Rimlace does too. Uh, don't be a dick. We will change the rules as we see fit. If you think we need more rules, see rules one and two. Anyway, that's everything I have to say about 40k Death Watch and Rimlace, and we're going to go record Men at Arms today. In the meantime, if you all have a good and wonderful time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.